Lisa's bright world of one. Lisa is usually a happy girl who loves school, but sometimes she feels sad and alone. Some days, Lisa feels like she doesn't have a friend in the room. When Lisa is feeling down, she finds joy in doing the things she loves, like reading books at the library. She can stay there for hours. Lisa loves sitting under a tree on a nice sunny day. Listening to music and dancing in her room is Lisa's favorite thing to do. After a sad start to the day, Lisa realizes that sometimes it is all right to be alone. Welcome back to the final video of our three-part series on creating consistent characters for a children's book and animated video. Today, I'll walk you through the process of transforming the storybook we created previously into a short animated video just like the one you just watched using Pika Labs, Canva, and Eleven Labs. Let's get started. Pika Labs is an AI video generator that can create animated videos given text and or an image. To get started, go to Pika Art and sign up for an account. You can generate three three-second watermarked videos for free every day on the website. Here are the pricing plans. The Pro plan is the only one available for commercial use, and it costs $58 per month. For this video, I will use it in Discord because I can generate many videos for free. The website offers the newer version, but I have gotten good results using the older version in Discord. So I'll click on my username, then click on the Discord icon. Accept the invite and follow the prompts. This is the Discord app on my desktop. You should see the Pika logo here. Click it. You can use one of the public channels to prompt or direct message Pika. Go to the right side and look for the Pika logo. If you don't see it, click here. Just type anything to start direct messaging the bot. To send a command, enter backslash animate. Now you have the option to upload an image as a reference or you can just enter a prompt. I'm going to upload an image from our storyboard. Click on plus one more, then prompt. I'll enter a description of the animation I want. When it's done, click the play button to view it. Well, that doesn't look that good. At this point, I can generate it again and or modify the prompt. So after many generations and testing various prompts, I found that using simple text prompts like smiling or frowning and adding the negative parameter yield better results. Here's a list of accepted commands and parameters. Unlike mid-journey, parameters are preceded with one hyphen. You can add objects that aren't in the image and animate them. Like in this prompt, I added flying birds. I noticed that sometimes my character's eye color changes in the generated video, so I tried adding brown eyes to the prompt and it worked most of the time. And here are the best results and their prompts. When you are done, download the video here. Remember, if you are using the free version, the videos will have a watermark and are not high resolution, so you might want to upscale them using a tool like CapCut. Now let's create the voiceover. My go-to voice creator is Eleven Labs. It has a great selection of AI voices and the option to record your own voice. Here are the subscription plans. There's a free plan, but it's not for commercial use. I have the $5 per month plan, which is suffice for what I need. 
You can search for a voice or create your own by clicking the Add Voice button. I will search for a gentle sounding voice since it is for a children's story. Click on the play icon to preview a voice. I think this one will work. Now you can create separate audio files by generating them one by one for each scene, or you can create one file for the entire script. I'll do the latter. Click the Generate button to create the voiceover. Each generation will cost a certain number of characters. Let's take a listen. Lisa is usually a happy girl who loves school, but sometimes she feels sad and alone. I like it, so I'll download it by clicking this button. Here is the storyboard I created in Canva. I could create a new design. Instead, I will use the Magic Resize tool to convert this design into a YouTube video. This tool is only available for pro accounts. Each page in the storyboard is a page or clip in the video. I've already uploaded the animated videos I generated in Pika Labs. Now, I'll delete the images and add the corresponding video. Drag it to cover the page. If you want to hide the watermark, just stretch the video until it is out of view. You can also set the video as the background. I'm going to add a page for the book cover. I just animated certain parts of the cover because I didn't like the results from animating the whole front cover. I need to add the rest of the cover's elements like the book title. Go here to add a transition between the pages. Canva has many transitions available. I like this one and will apply it to all pages. You can also change the transition individually. I'll just check the videos. This one needs to be shortened because the animation looks weird at the end. So, I'll drag the right side to the left. This one doesn't have a video, so I'll add an animation. I want the animation only on Enter, and I'll slow down its speed. Now let's add the voiceover I downloaded from Eleven Labs. Click on the audio file from your Uploads folder. The track is added underneath the video pages. Let's take a listen. Lisa is usually a happy girl who loves school, but sometimes she feels sad and alone. But sometimes she feels sad and alone. Some days Lisa feels like she doesn't have a friend. Obviously, we need to do some editing because the video is not in sync with the audio, so let's do it. Whenever I hear the end of a scene, I'll split the audio at that point by right-clicking on the track, then split audio. Another way is to look for low waves in the track, 
because they might indicate pauses in the audio, which could be a point to split. Be careful. Canva allows for only 50 audio tracks in a design. Another way is to adjust the speed of the video to shorten or extend it to match the audio. You can also delete or split a clip by right-clicking on it, then select Delete or Split Page. The first clip doesn't have audio, so I'll go back to 11 labs and generate it. When it's downloaded, drag the file into Canva. Now, the video and audio have been edited. It's time to add the script. I'm going to copy the text and its formatting from the storybook we created in the previous video. Let's add an animation to the text. We're almost finished, but I think the video needs some background music. I'll use one of the many music tracks that are available in Canva, but you can use your own. Just make sure you're not violating any copyrights. Go to the left sidebar and look for audio. If it is not there, go to apps and search for audio. Search for the type of music you want. When you find one you like, click on it to add it to the design. You might have to decrease the volume so it doesn't overpower the voiceover. Go to Audio Effects to add a fade out so the music doesn't end abruptly. When your video is ready, go here to download it. Choose MP4 video. If you have a pro account, you can increase the quality. Click Download. Now we have a storybook and short animated video featuring our character. You can upload your video to YouTube and share it on social media as a way to promote your book or for a faceless YouTube channel. This concludes our series. If you found this video helpful, please consider liking and subscribing to our channel. Thank you for watching.